This is the duckbill mask. It's great for people who cannot tolerate masks touching their mouths. Maybe they have claustrophobia. It has an easy fit. I don't even use a nose piece. I just put my glasses over the top edge of the mask and I get a good seal. It naturally has a pretty good seal. This was inspired by the vacuum bag mask that was seen in a YouTube video by Dr. Ryan Southworth. The link is below. I've enlarged the pattern for use with fabrics. This is the pattern I use. There should be a link below for this pattern. I traced the pattern onto freezer paper and I wrote the directions on one side. With freezer paper, you can iron it to your fabric for a temporary seal. Then you can cut around the edges of your four layers of fabric using scissors or a rotary cutter. And when you're done, you can peel off the pattern and you'll have your four pieces of fabric that you'll need for making this mask. I'll be using some yellow fabric today and here is one cut out with the pattern. You're going to need four of these. You're going to pin two together and sew along the long edge. You're going to want right sides together. And if you're using a different fabric for inside, you're going to pin an outside fabric to an inside fabric with right sides together. You sew along that long edge, then you flip it the other way, and iron the edge. Now you're going to repeat for the other set. You'll pin them together. And you'll sew along that long edge. Flip them the other way. And iron. Remember, before you sew, you'll want right sides together. And if you're using a different fabric for inside and outside, then you'll pin an inside fabric to an outside fabric with right sides together. Then you'll sew along the long edge, flip it the other way and iron it flat like these two. Now you're going to need some pins to pin all four pieces together. You'll want the outside fabric on the inside and the inside fabric on the outside. Now that we have everything pinned, we're going to sew along the other three edges and we're going to leave space at the ends, about three quarters of an inch to one inch. Around the rest of the edges, we're going to sew about a quarter of an inch, whatever is easiest for you. Okay, we've sewn around the edge, leaving extra space at the two ends about a quarter inch around the rest of it. I even made a mistake here, but that's okay. And now we're going to fit our elastic loops into each side between the layers of fabric. I'm using a dark thread here so that it can be easily seen for the tutorial. 
However, when I usually sew the masks, I choose a coordinating thread or a thread that will not be noticed, but to each their own. For the elastic, I like to cut nine inches. Um, I do have family members who prefer 10 inches or more, but for my face, nine inches works the best with this pattern. I'm using some very thin elastic that I found at the local craft store. Okay, here we have our two lengths of elastic, each of them nine inches long. Now we're going to tie each of them into a loop so that we'll have two loops, one for each side of the mask to go around the ears. And there we have our two loops of elastic. Now we're going to put them into each end of the mask and we're going to pin them there and sew them there. There we have it pinned. We have the elastic pinned into the sides. I'm going to use a satin stitch or a zigzag stitch to stitch them into place right around the knot. Okay, we have the stitching done on the elastic on either side of the knot. You can tell I'm not a professional when it comes to sewing and yet this is still effective. This mask is easy to sew for all abilities there are other ways to finish the ends. If you don't want to add the elastic this way, you can add it different ways. We've sewn around the edge and now we're going to use pinking shears around the edge. This helps with washing. Um, it will keep your fabric from fraying and knotting. Pinking shears have tiny triangles on the blade and they Make it so that when your fabric does fray during the wash, only tiny pieces of fabric come out and you don't get the big long knots with the long pieces of fabric. You get that little zigzag cut there and you'll want to do that around the whole edge. And there we go. The pinking shears have been used around the entire edge. And now when it's in the wash, it will not fray. And if you do not have pinking shears, that is okay. You do not have to do this step. Your masks will still work. You'll still be able to wash them. You may have to do some trimming after they come out of the dryer, um, but they will still work. Now we're going to flip the mask inside out. Your right side should now, now be on the outside and your inside fabrics should now be on the inside. You can lay it flat and we're going to sew that or iron that and then sew it. There's just a bit left to do here. We're going to sew a short line along the short end. It does not need to reach all the way to the end. It's just to help keep the shape of the duckbill mask so that it stays away from your face. And 
And there you go. That's the duckbill mask. Put one end over your nose and one end under your chin. The elastic goes around your ears. It stays away from your face, away from your mouth, from your lips. Um, it's a very comfortable mask with a nice seal. I think you're going to like it. Hope everyone stays safe and well.